Sky Squad, we are back in the building and we have got to talk about some news that is breaking all over the internet. Oh, yes. And this is about Real Housewives of Potomac star Robin Dixon's husband, life partner, man, fiance, whatever they are at this point in time. And the headline is scathing, okay? Okay, so this, I'm reading to you from the headline, is a, quote, lurid scheme of harassment, extortion that played out under the nose of Coppin's celebrated head basketball coach, Juan Dixon, okay? That is who the article is alluding to. So let's dive into the specifics of what exactly is going on. All right. So you guys know that Robin and Juan are, you know, at this point where they are engaged. We don't know when that's coming. But what we do know is that Robin may have a lot to answer for at the reunion because of this scandal. Now, the first place that I happened to see this was actually the neighborhood talk. So I want to pull up this to let you guys know that this is indeed happening. OK, this is indeed happening. All right, here is a copy of the lawsuit, which you guys can again find on the Neighborhood Talk. Shout out to them. And I'll place a link, if you're watching this on YouTube, I'll place the link in the description down below. Um, if you're watching this anyplace else, you guys can head over to the Neighborhood Talk on Instagram, give them a follow, give them a comment, let them know how you feel about the story as well. Now let's get into the details of it all. And it says that a... Coppin State University assistant basketball coach allegedly catfished a player online into providing intimate photos, texts, and then blackmailed the player into videotaping an intimate encounter before publicizing the material when the player resisted further demands for intimacy. This is what the lawsuit filed in Baltimore City Circuit Court alleges. Now, the complaint says, and I'm reading to you guys from the Baltimore Brew. So I'll place this article in the description down below. So now you have the court uh, document right here. And then you will also have the article for which you can read for yourself. Okay. Now, um, the lawsuit states by information and belief, Lucian Brownlee, a former guard, who served as director of player development and director of basketball operations, harassed, tormented, and intimately assaulted the player, okay, Ivan Williams, before publishing intimate material he had obtained from the student. So basically what's happening is a former guard who is now the director of player development and director of basketball operations, harassed and tormented this student. Okay. So allegedly the cop and basketball coach, Juan Dixon, who is named in the complaint, allegedly failed to take action when informed of Brownlee's actions. So at this point, okay. At this point, this is crazy. At this point, Coppin State University also, okay, is named in the lawsuit. And rather than supporting the student, they allegedly questioned him harshly and retaliated against the student who was allegedly harassed and tormented. They 
retaliated against him by withdrawing previously promised financial assistance. That is what this is stating. Now, his attorney, the student's attorney, says the way he was treated was abhorrent, okay? And they were able to build their case despite the anonymous blackmailer purporting to be a third party. Our strong belief is that Lucian himself was the catfisher, all right? Now, it goes on to state, even if Brownlee, who is the person being accused, who the neighborhood talk does publish a photo of the the young the young person involved, okay? You guys can read that for yourselves and and look at that photo for yourselves. Um Here's the thing. Even if Brownlee was just a fellow victim of an anonymous tormentor, the minute he became a coach, he had an obligation to report this. Because here's the thing. If the if Brownlee allegedly coerced the student player, okay, into doing something, if he wasn't the person that put this out there, this article and the lawsuit is stating that he had an obligation to report any type of harassment. So here's where Juan Dixon comes in. They're saying that Juan, having prior knowledge of the issues with Brownlee, okay, who is the, again, who is the reported, um, tormentor, okay? Apparently, Juan had prior knowledge of issues with him, according to the complaint, and should have never placed him in a position of authority over players. It says here that the coach should have known better than to put this person in a place of seniority. Now, apparently, Juan has not responded to any phone calls or emails uh, you know, asking him to comment about this situation. Nor did the school's athletic director, Derek Carter. All right. Now, Coppin State University spokesperson Robin McCullough responded to an email by saying Coppin State University does not comment on pending litigation. All right. Now, the student in this says that he received a message through social media in the fall of his freshman year from a woman, allegedly, who seemed interested in a romantic relationship, all right? He was enticed into sending images of himself to this person of an intimate nature, and he believed they were private and in the context of developing a romantic relationship. This is what the lawsuit states. So again, you guys can go back here and you can read the lawsuit. Then the online paramour, they state in the article, started blackmailing, okay? Started blackmailing Williams, the student, and threatening to publish the photos and text unless he provided more salacious material. The text continued through 2018 to 2019 throughout that basketball season. So the student, Williams, in fear of losing his place in the basketball program, his tuition, room, and board payments continued to respond to the person messaging him in a futile attempt to appease his tormentor. So then in the spring of 2019, Williams learned from Coach Brownlee, who is at the center of this, who was then a senior who would return the next year as a staff member that Brownlee had also exchanged sex, uh, intimate content with the plaintiff's tormentor. The blackmailer then ordered the two men to have intimate relations with each other, according to the lawsuit. At first, Williams said no, he was not going to do it. 
but then returned to campus in the fall and the blackmailer demanded that Williams record and send a video of the plaintiff and Lucian Brownlee engaging in intimacy of an oral nature, okay? Um, in 2019, the blackmailer instructed that Williams instructed Williams that Brownlee was going to coordinate an encounter with him, according to the lawsuit. The student says, hoping the non-response would end the blackmail, uh, it prompted warnings that the blackmailer would wild out. Then Williams, the student, sent more videos of himself, but the blackmailer insisted on one of him having relations with Brownlee sending repeated messages providing Coach Brownlee's availability. The back and forth continued through March of 2020. And then it says, by information and belief, the blackmailer was Coach Brownlee. Now, this is deep. I'm trying to tell y'all. Unable to tell anybody what was happening. Apparently, the, the player contemplated, you know, ending his own life. Um told him his family that he was also uncomfortable with the rampant substance use on the team during frequent away games which then led to the father trying to arrange a meeting with coppin officials all right at this point in time the lawsuit alleges that juan indicated that he was helpless to address the substance issue in any meaningful way and was adamant that the plaintiff should stay with the program. Then <laughs> it just continues. Wow. Apparently, the student returned to campus in the fall of 2020 and the blackmail and threats continued. OK. This time. The student didn't respond, and that's when the material used to blackmail the plaintiff was published and revealed to members of the team, staff, and the public, all right? Apparently, the material appeared on Instagram and has since been taken down. The lawsuit is alleging that Juan directed the student to come to practice the next day where they met, and according to the complaint, Juan admitted that Lucian Brownlee was mentally ill or otherwise emotionally imbalanced and that his history was known to the coach, athletic director, Derek Carter, and the school. So the lawsuit is alleging that Juan admitted that this person was mentally ill or otherwise emotionally imbalanced and has a history that was known to 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 the coach well to, to the athletic director and the school and the complaint says the school whose policy on such misconduct prohibits any of this took no action to remedy the situation the student then asked for an investigation okay in which a lawyer for the university further traumatized him with questions about his own intimate past and orientation. His lawyer says it's cringeworthy, the questions that he was asked. Then the university terminated the student's housing and tuition assistance. The lawyer says he managed to complete the semester by working remotely, then transferred to another school to complete his degree. I don't even know what to say on this one. Um, it, it, this is it's a sad story for everybody, to be quite honest with you. And um, I didn't even want to have to talk about it, to be quite honest. It, it, this is 
but it's happening. So let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. And um, again, I'll place the article in the description so you can read it for yourself. Go to the Baltimore Brew. Article was written by Edward Erickson Jr. Let me know what you guys think.